consequences of seeking help from someone else rather than God. Stay tuned. Okay, so we're going to go here to 2 Kings chapter 1. And we're going to start in verse 1. And we're going to see here the son of Ahab, where he was, he was sick, he was, um, he was hurt. And instead of going to the God of Israel, he sought somebody else for help. All right, so we're going to look at that. After the death of Ahab, Moab rebelled against Israel. Now Ahaziah had fallen through the lattice of his upper room in Samaria and injured himself. So he sent messengers and instructed them, Go, inquire of Baal-zebub, the god of Ekron, whether I will recover from this injury. Now here the word Baal-zebub, it literally means Lord of the Flies. So then Baal, this word here Baal means Lord, and Zebub means Flies. So basically, Lord of the Flies. In the New Testament, this name was attributed to Satan. So Satan was considered Baalzebub or Beelzebub. That was Satan's uh, other name in the New Testament. Okay, so then what's happening here? So here he falls from the lattice. So he falls from an upper room and he gets injured. He gets really hurt. So now what does he tell his servants? Go inquire of what? Go inquire of who? Of a demon. He's saying to go to the God of Ekron. Here, the God of Ekron or the Ekronites is the Philistines. So he's telling his servants to go to the Philistines who worship demons, you know, and to inquire of the demons if he's going to be okay. So as you're going to know, this didn't set well with the Lord. So we're going to see what God says here. So let's go to verse 3. But the angel of the Lord said to Elijah the Tishbite, Go up to meet the messengers of the king of Samaria and ask them, is it because there's no God in Israel that you are on your way to inquire of Baal-zebub, the God of Ekron? Therefore, this is what the Lord says. You will not get up from the bed on which you are lying. You will surely die. So here we have, because this king here wanted to seek out help from someone else rather than the Lord. What happened? God wasn't going to help him, meaning he was going to die from his injuries. So like today. If you're in trouble, let's say you're hurt, or maybe you're going through some type of pain from a family, friend, maybe you lost your job, maybe you got an illness, whatever the case may be, if you start seeking help from someone else and you do not get on your knees and really cry out to the Lord for help, what's going to happen is you will not recover from your situation. Your situation will get worse. Your situation will bury you, so to speak. It will collapse on you. Why? Because the only one that could help you is the Lord. So if you're seeking help from someone else that does not have the power, like, like God has the power to help you, then what are you going to do? See, that's why you got to seek God first. Now, if you seek the Lord and then the Lord sends somebody to help you, that's okay. But you sought the Lord first and then he sent you the right person. Maybe he sent you something that you needed from that person or the person was just knowledgeable to help you with whatever situation, whatever the case is, God is the one who's involved. When God is involved, he will send you the right person. But if you go to somebody else, then that tells you that you don't have faith in the Lord. See, that is a sign that you're not placing your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. You're placing your faith in a person rather than God himself. So then you're not exercising faith. How do you please the Lord? Through faith. How is your faith going to grow when you don't exercise it and then trust in the Lord? See, every time we fail to use our faith or to exercise it, it will never grow. It will stay stagnant. That's why God allows bad situation in our lives so that we will exercise the faith he gave us. Why? Because he wants our faith to grow. So then if you go searching for help apart from the Lord, then guess what happened? Your faith will not grow. You will not please God because you're not exercising faith. And then God is not going to help you. And then you're going to be in serious trouble. Now, let's continue here. So then it says, so Elijah departed. Okay. So verse five, when the messengers returned to the king, he asked them, why have you returned? They replied, a man came up to meet us and said, go back to the king who sent you and tell him that this is what the Lord says. Is it because there's no God in Israel that you are 
sending these men to inquire of Baal Zabab, the god of Ekron. Therefore, you will not get up from the bed on which you are lying. You will surely die. The king asked him, What sort of man came up to meet you and speak these words to you? He was a hairy man. So here the phrase hairy man just means that Elijah was wearing a camel garment. That's why it was hairy, and that's why they said hairy man. But it wasn't because Elijah had a lot of hair. It was because the garment he was wearing had animal hair. So that's why they said a hairy man, they answered, with a leather belt around his waist. It was Elijah the Tishbite, said the king. Then the king Ahaziah sent to Elijah a captain with his company of 50 men. So the captain went up to Elijah, who was sitting on top of a hill, and said to him, Men of God, the king declares, come down. So here you have... The king wanted to arrest Elijah for what he said. But then what he doesn't understand is that Elijah pronounced judgment on him from the Lord. Because remember, the prophets in the Old Testament spoke the word of God. So in the same way, if you're seeking help from somewhere else, you see what the scripture says. The scripture itself condemns you. And you're going to be in trouble. And then, instead of repenting, what does the king do? He goes to arrest Elijah. So when you do something bad and you know that you're doing something wrong, do not continue doing it. Repent, ask the Lord to forgive you, and he will restore you. So the Lord is not going to just completely you know, bring judgment. He's going to give you a chance to repent and to make it right so that he could bless you. And so that you will learn your lesson not to do it again. So if you seek help from someone else apart from the Lord, then you will not be helped. So you cannot do that. Remember, get on your knees, pray to the Lord, ask him to help you, ask him to restore you, ask him for whatever you're going through to help you through it. Or if you need something, to give it to you. Or if it's health-wise, to restore your health. Or if you feel depressed or you feel lonely or anything, to give you that joy that you need so that you don't feel like that. So do not abandon the Lord. Do not skip the Lord and go to somebody else because it's just going to be worse for you. Seek the Lord. Ask him first. And you're going to see what's going to happen when you put the Lord first. It will be incredible. Thank you for listening.